Hello everyone. So this is the video where I summarize this issue of The Economist. This is going to be a very quick one because there's two uh, security issues I'm choosing not to talk about here. And uh, obviously the, the one is going to be Israel Hamas because I spoke about it before and there's no real new or interesting updates that I can think of. And of course I'm going to be giving China a, a break. You know, it, they've been a security issue in a lot of these uh, instances. And, and of course they're the largest, They well I'm sorry, they're the second largest country by population and thus affect the economy and security issues significantly, but there's no new or interesting development here. Uh, this is a link to think tanks, about over 160 think tanks that I've seen in The Economist and in Foreign Affairs indexed for you. First security issue. Um, obviously, this is a big one going into the 2024 election. I view uh, the January 6 attacks, riots, rebellion, whatever the hell you want to call it, as a national security issue. issue. Uh, but it did bring to light other things. I guess Washington, D.C., for all of its, you know, city on a hill mystique, is actually a slum, much of it. And the problem is, is that the local police, uh, which I think is called the Washington Metropolitan Police Department, has always been very weakly funded, and it's always been a question as to how it should be administered. Because it's kind of a local police station over a federal jurisdiction, which is hard. So there's been some reforms there, and, and it's not for abolition, but to have it made um, bring federal oversight to their tactics and techniques. Gang violence is spreading in South America, and it's going into Argentina. Uh, now, I do want to say maybe the reason for the spread statistically be could become could be because, you know, crime was at an all-time low, uh, much of that due to just places being shut down because of the pandemic and whatnot. But the fact that it's spreading to places that it previously didn't really exist is a bit disturbing. It shows that there's uh, maybe societal collapses going on. Poland. Okay, if there's anything that Russia has taught us, it's that a bulk of countries aren't there out there, especially Western nations, are not ready for a full-scale actual land war. And Poland has more reason to be frightened than anybody else. Yes, I do think Vladimir Putin is crazy enough to roll into Poland. And furthermore, I think anytime somebody wags their finger and says he would never, that's just a sign that he's going to. He is the, I mean, I'm sorry, he's the sort of madman slash political Eastern Orthodox strongman that's just popular for that region. Poland wants to have 300,000 active duty military, which I think would actually be the largest within uh, Europe. So, you know, I don't know if they can get that big. I do know this, you know, a lot of countries, especially Western powers, you know, what did they rely on? They relied on the U.S. Um, you know, Vladimir Putin has also exposed how thin our supply lines are after two wars that lasted two decades or more. Yeah, our supplies have run thin. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. So I'm going to so blow my own horn on this topic. I said in a, in a previous video, and I don't know which video it is, that you could tell much of uh, where people stood on Hamas versus Israel by how they view what's called kind of the culture wars, you know, and culture warrior issues such as, you know, marriage, family, you know, things like that. Um, you could argue um, Christian propriety and, and things such as that as well are the culture wars. And, you know, I said that, if you know, the older IDF, the older, more conservative people are going to be more pro-Israel and, you know, you're going to have the younger people um, that are younger leftist people are going to be more uh, sentimental to the Palestinians. And this article sort of proved that I was right about that. Now, I know it doesn't necessarily make sense to everybody um, how that stands, but the fact that it is, tr but, you know, it's a fact that it is a fact. And so I thought it was cool that I actually thought of this earlier. Uh, as for that, that's all I have for you uh, today. I'm going to be making another video on The Economist in a few days because I'm a bit behind here. Uh, but that's all for now. Thank you.